My studio sounds terrible. Listen to that. Doesn't that sound horrible? The ring is just awful. For reference, this is my actual bathroom. And check this out. Listen to that. It actually sounds better than my studio. My studio. My bathroom. My studio. My bathroom. My studio. My bath. Yeah? What are you doing? Um, I'm, I'm doing experiments. Now to fix this problem, I'm going to make some sound panels, kind of like the ones you see right here and right here. Begin to vibrate. The science behind them is actually pretty straightforward. When you have an empty room, as soon as anything that produces sound begins to vibrate, those vibrations that it produces scatter throughout the entire room, making a ruckus as it bounces off the empty walls uncontrollably. And by the time it gets to your ears, you get really sad. But when you add sound panels to the room, they soak up those pesky vibrations to stop that dreadful bouncing. And then your room will sound much better. To demonstrate this concept, I got a plastic container and sprayed its flat backside to mimic a bare wall. Notice how the liquid pellets hit the container and ricochet into the air, just like a sound wave would do on an empty wall. Then I got a tile of acoustic foam to show how sound gets soaked up on a treated wall. Notice how the pellets hit the foam and don't shoot back into the air. This is basically what happens to vibrations when you add sound absorption panels to a room. So to make these, I relied on what every sensible person uses to educate themselves. And after browsing through the greatest source of knowledge in the world, I knew I was ready. From my understanding, I would only need wood, insulation, fabric, screws, and staples. The design I was aiming for was 15 inches wide and four feet long, but I also wanted at least four inches in depth to comfortably house the insulation. So my first mission was to get some wood, and I went to Lowe's to see what I could find. Oh yeah. At first we found wood that was too expensive. Then we found wood that was too big. And then we found wood that was just right. And look at that, 758, not a bad price. The one by four by 10s. Gave it a good shake, perfect. Then I got some insulation. It's kind of hard to see at this angle, but I think this is the right one. Although the packaging kind of does look different from the one that's online. Notice how it says it's good for sound. So I chopped the wood up into pieces that were four feet long and 15 inches long. And then I sanded it down. A lot of the wood bits would get in my eyes, so make sure you wear protection. And then for some reason, I just kept sanding. I don't really know why. It just felt right to get it so smooth. Then we got two different kinds of screws. One was a drywall screw and the other one was an exterior screw. The exterior screw is the big one and the drywall screw is the smaller one. Our thinking was that we'd have the small screw hold the wood pieces in place while the larger screw locked them both together. We also made sure that the four foot pieces of wood were screwed in from the outside. This would make sure that the inside of the frame was exactly 15 inches wide to fit the insulation. Unfortunately, a lot of the times the bigger screws just seemed to crack the wood, but it seemed to work. Now, before I kept building, I did some digging and I was starting to get a little worried about the potential dangers of working with mineral wool. Apparently, a small study in China found that rock wool could damage DNA. And according to facingourrisk.org, cancers are caused by damage to the DNA in your cells. And I don't know about you guys, but I really don't want a bunch of mineral wool dust going into my lungs and damaging my DNA. So to fix this issue, I decided to wrap the panels with a layer of fabric on the back, then I would add the insulation, and then double wrap the front with a layer of fabric and another layer of felt. With my mind set to ease, I went ahead and cut out the fabric for the back of the sound panels and tightly stapled that fabric to the wood. And so far, it wasn't looking too bad. And once we got a hang of it, we whipped through the other panels super fast. When we got to the insulation, we were really careful not to get any on our hands. The little fibers can get stuck into your skin like plexiglass and that stuff is really nasty. As you see, the insulation fit into the frames pretty well. Just a little stuffing and it was a perfect fit. I also had a bunch of leftover foam from the way I previously treated my walls, so I thought, why not stuff them in? Now, this may be the greatest idea or the worst idea of all time, but I figured it wouldn't hurt to have extra protection against the mineral wool. Plus, it is acoustic foam after all, and I'm all about recycling. It's also worth mentioning that the insulation would slouch when it was propped up at a 90 degree angle, so we decided to staple the fabric very tightly to the frames to keep it compact and squished together. However, this just ended up bowing the wood on the sides. In other words, tight is good, too tight not good. We made sure to staple this last layer as clean as possible because this would be our finished look. Probably the most important part of this step was getting a clean fold on the top corners. It wasn't too hard, but it really helps to have someone else there to do it for you while you just watch and hold a camera. But if you don't have that, I'm sure it's not too hard to manage. Except if you don't get the fold just right, you might just have a crease start in the wrong area, which you can see right there. The last step was to add the wall hangers. I wanted to make something sturdy, but I also wanted something that would function as a buffer between the walls and the sound panels. 
Interestingly enough, having a gap between the wall and the sound panels is actually supposed to improve their performance. There are a lot smarter people than me to explain why this happens, and this video from GIK Acoustics is one such video, so feel free to check it out, or don't, and just take my word for it. With the remainder of what I had left over, I cut two inch by five inch pieces that would eventually serve as my hanging points and my buffer blocks. All right, now I'm gonna use all these guys, four for each panel to lift them off the wall a little bit. I think it's gonna really help out with the, the sound, at least I hope. Now that I had the blocks cut out, I attached them directly to the sound panel frames with the drywall screws. The upper pieces were attached two inches away from the top of the frames, while the lower pieces were attached directly to the bottom. On the top pieces, I added a D-ring hanger to each block to hold up the sound panels. I chose these hangers because they looked the most sturdy. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find the weight they were rated for, but they're made of steel and they seemed very reliable. The final step for us was to clear out and reassemble my dismantled studio. And by far, our biggest challenge was to seal up this nightmare of a window. Because this is exactly where I planned on hanging the majority of my sound panels. So we came up with an impromptu idea that involved paper and a lot of plaster. After filling the window with recycled packaging and insulating styrofoam, we ultimately decided to seal everything together with poster board and plaster. Now anyone with experience in this stuff would probably tell you that using paper is a terrible idea, due to the way it bends and warps when it's exposed to wet things like plaster, and that's because it does. Which is why it literally took us forever to smoothen this area and make it look like an actual wall. But after applying about 10 pounds of plaster, the warping became a second thought. And look here, there's no more window! I also installed this four inch by six foot piece of wood to the wall support beam so I don't have to use any of the drywall to hold up the sound panels. Then I stained the wood and drilled in the screws that I would use as my wall hangers. And once it was all put together, it looked pretty sweet. This is the final studio put together with the new sound panels. I think all in all, I'm really happy with the way these things turned out. They go really nicely with the new paint job and I can immediately tell a difference in the studio sound. When I added it up, the cost of these panels ended up being around $20 each, which is actually under the budget we set for this project. And yes, I am only showing a close up of my best panels because the imperfections on the other ones are just a little embarrassing on camera. But I do have a cool tip. If you ever mess up stapling on the finishing fabric, like I did right here, you can easily fix this by throwing a tapestry over it. You might want to get one that's less nylon though to help with the uh, sound absorption, but yeah, it works. If I were to do this again, there are several things I would do differently. For starters, I would have definitely put a support beam on the back of the panels to prevent the bowing. I would have also used a much different type of insulation. This one right here is literally recycled denim and I'm almost hesitant to redo all my panels because I guess this stuff is so safe, even the packaging shows someone touching it with their bare hands. If I had used better insulation, I most likely would have used a more suitable fabric like duck fabric or speaker fabric. And not to mention, I probably wouldn't have sanded the wood down so much. But enough talking, let's hear the final results and what these bad boys did for the studio.